Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Paul Kiesel. Uh, I am uh, a proud consumer attorney here in California. I've been practicing law for uh, 38 years. Uh, technology keeps me engaged in a way uh, I never imagined 38 years ago it would. So Juul e-cigarette litigation. I was the lead counsel in the Juul e-cigarette litigation in California. The coordinated proceeding, I was co-lead counsel along with another attorney. And as far as the use of Liquid Texas concerned, everyone in my firm has an iPad. Every one of my attorneys have an iPad. And every one of my attorneys not just get an iPad, but they get Liquid Text that comes along with this iPad. Because in order for them to have the most effective use of services at my office, we all need to have Liquid Text available. So I can use it and I can send the document to someone else with all my annotations and they can use it. It's a critical product for every one of my attorneys here at the firm. Uh, Jeff and I are amazing supporters and lovers of Liquid Text. I use it every day. Every I every I import every document into Liquid Text. Jeffrey? Yeah, I mean, I think my my main contribution at the firm was introducing Paul to the Liquid Text app to begin with. So uh, I will take credit for that. Although at the time I was a Microsoft Surface user, and the reason why I said to Paul, you need to try this is because I didn't have an iPad to, to work with it on. So I do consumer class actions all over the country, um, and I've been practicing law for, for decades and have also seen the way that the practice of law has changed in terms of the technology and being able to use and mark up PDFs and documents. It's part of our daily existence, and Liquid Text just makes it so much easier to do that. Oh, very good. And now you can use it on your Surface Go, right? Well, no, no. Now, now I now I use an iPad. So oh, I use an iPad, iPad okay. now for. But I was also instrumental. I would like to think with getting you guys to come out with the well Microsoft friendly product because at the time I was a Surface guy. Um, so I'm really appreciative of being able to use uh, Liquid Text on my PC, and then of course keep going with the work on uh, my iPad. Okay, very and good. So I think it's important, Sean, for me to kind of discuss how, what my iteration was to get to Liquid Text. Because I started with I Annotate, and I Annotate was a PDF-based program that would allow you to highlight and make some notes on the side of the page. It was a very rudimentary annotation program. And then PDF Expert came into the field, and I started to I got rid of I Annotate, and I started using PDF Expert to do the exact same thing. And when Jeff said, hey, there's this product called Liquid Text that might really fill the bill for you, it did, it has, and I haven't looked back. Very good. Very good. Jeffrey, did you use something before Liquid Text before you came to it? I, I used similar products like Paul is referring to, but again, once you use just an, a simple annotation product to look at a PDF and, and then you go to Liquid Text, you, you basically never go back because of the things that you're able to do in Liquid Text that you can't use in a simple annotation product. And that's what makes it so uh, convenient to use. Okay. Very good. So is there anything specific? I know that you're both users now, but is there anything specific within your practice of law that makes liquid text really, I guess, an advantage to you? Yeah, I mean, I, I would look, I, I travel across country to go to a federal court in Tennessee on Monday, and my assistant knows to put all of the documents that I need into a folder uh, on OneDrive. I then bring those into liquid text. So I have the complaint, I had the court's order setting the conference. I had the joint report that we put in there. I had the motion to dismiss order that her honor had put. I had grabbed her local rules and put that also. And it was all in one file folder in liquid text. Had those documents opened up, was able to annotate them, easily cross-reference, click on them, make notes, and have arrows to where those documents were. So for me, anytime that I have a court appearance or I'm working with multiple documents, that's where the product really shines to my mind. And it's worth saying, Sean, and I'm not sure how many lawyers that'll be watching this are in a similar place, but in 2013, I eliminated their file cabinets. In 2013, I said, no file cabinets exist at this law firm. We are going purely paperless. And everyone was given an iPad. That's why you have to have an iPad because there's no other way to get access to your data. So we are a paperless firm. I had one partner who's now uh, emeritus. And he would never give it up. He has boxes everywhere. Uh, but I, I couldn't change him. He'd been doing it for 50 years. But for everyone else, it is a paperless environment. And Liquitex plays exactly into that world. But it's important to note, 
when you're going into a hearing like Jeff is, and I have many times, sometimes I'll actually have two iPads because I need to keep track of all the documents and I can't do it all with not having a notebook. And notebooks are kind of cool because you can flip in a tab to know where you're going to go. Sometimes you need to have two iPads that have liquid text on it so you can actually go back and forth. So it sounds like a great feature is the real-time synchronization between devices. Correct. Yes, without a doubt, yeah. Okay. So Jeffrey, you labeled the number, you detailed the number of features. Is there any features that really stand out to you that really brought you to, to liquid text? The main feature that brought me to liquid text is the ability to, to bring in a number of different documents, have them in one place on the iPad or your device and being able to then highlight, review, make notes on the side and draw arrows. So let's just say you were looking at, I don't know, you had cases open as well as your outline, as well as your brief and whatever else. And you wanted to remember what the standard was. You could put standard and then have an arrow to the case that explains what the standard is have the same arrow going to your brief and then just click. And the fact that it's, it instantly will open to that portion of it. It's something of a revelation until you, you use it. And then once you use it, you never want to go back to not using it. And the features that keep getting added are also really great. The ability to now have OCR on the device that if you bring in a PDF, that's not OCR and it will do it for you uh, to make it readable. That That's just, you know, a simple function. That seems like a no brainer. I'm sure it took a lot on the back end, but it, it's a very appreciated function. Okay. And you both do very complex litigation. So when you say a number of documents, how many documents do you actually have in a workspace or a project that you're working on normally for a litigation? Well, I'm just thinking my latest appearance, as I said, I mean, I, I had at least half a dozen documents in the one file folder related to my court appearance. All of those documents were open on liquid tech. So I could just click between them as I was preparing for it. So I think for me, it's it's hearing specific uh, so far. Every document that's important is going to go in there. And then I'll have that on my at my fingertips when I'm in court. So, but it's it's rarely that it'll go above a dozen uh, for a court appearance because my brain can only handle so much stimulation at once. And I'll say one of the features I like most that has already been there a couple of years now is the ability to take text out of a document and block and move it to the margin so I can have it on the side screen. So that way I don't have to, because I always had to actually annotate, hand write every single reference and then draw arrows to what it was I was referring to. Now the ability to take text and block it and move it out automatically created a link to where it is in the document. So I don't need arrows anymore because the link is already created. And it's great because it saves me time not having to write down what it was I think is important. I can pull the text out that's critical and move it to the margin and go back to it in the future. Just look at the marginalia and not the entire document itself. Okay. And, and Jeffrey, you brought liquid text to the firm or to Paul. Did you actually go through a software review, uh, taking it through all its bullet points to see how well it paired with your practice? No, I, as I as I said, I only brought it to Paul's attention because I read about it. I can't remember where, and I hadn't even used it. And I said to Paul, have you ever used this product? And he took a look at it and ran with it. And it's become probably, Paul, is it one of the most referred apps you've referred out to people? It's right along the top of the litigation tools that I think every attorney needs to have in their practice. Yeah. So I think, I mean, what, what we tend to do is we like to be early adopters and we like to be early discarders as well, because there are so many things that are marketed to attorneys that just don't get the job done or don't fit within our practice needs. And so we're always asked to try something out and it's rare that something makes it into the regular rotation. And liquid text is one that Paul, I remember using it. It was a revelation and we've never looked back. And that's, um, I think that's the best way to show uh, how it stood the test of time here at the firm. Oh, and I would say this, you know, people ought not be intimidated by how complex yeah. tasks that liquid text can actually do. Uh, when I started the conversation earlier before we did this program was I described it as a word processor. Uh, I, I am a great typist. I, I like having a document up and I can I can type things on my screen with a word word document. My staff can do things I can't even imagine. They can create text and, and, and tables and columns. I don't do that. I just use it in a very basic but an incredibly powerful way but sophisticated users, I can see from videos, can use this a lot more 
deliberatively than I do in, in the future. Well, when you picked it up the first time, both Paul and, and Jeffrey, did you have any aha moments? This is it. This is what we're going to be using. This is what is going to go on an iPad for all my employees. Well, Paul contemplates that for me, it was when I was finally able to use it because you guys came out with the Microsoft program. Uh, I, I, once you use it, even the basic features that we use, the ability to open up a number of documents, the ability to have your notes on the right side, the ability to draw and make connections, just those simple tasks. And that's what it excels at. It makes you understand that the previous way that you would mark up PDFs doesn't make any sense because all you're doing is literally highlighting something and then hoping that you can remember the connections you're making between the pile of documents either on your desk or in a different annotation program. And that's really the strength. So as I said, once you first try liquid text and even the, the basic features of it, you get hooked because it's, it's a different way of looking at a, a bunch of PDFs. I don't know, Paul, if you came to a different conclusion. I was going to say what he said. <laughs> Okay, very good. So I get an idea of your expertise with liquid text uh, from, you know, your, what you had talked about, but how did you get to that point, Jeffrey? Did you, was this just continuous use? Did you use documentation? Did you look at videos? The same thing with you, Paul. I mean, did you just start picking it up and using it? I mean, how did you get to your skill level? Well, for me, I was pretty much picking up, using it, trial and error is how I've gone about uh, using it. Uh, I wish I had the time. I'd like to have more time to actually, I've participated in some seminars that Craig has put together. Yeah, although, although and I, I agree with Paul, that there are a tremendous number of whistles and bells that Paul and I, I don't think, use. However, when there have been a few situations where I've tried to figure something out and just for the life of me, I couldn't get it. A, a quick search for it either on your platform or on YouTube will, will typically get me what I need. And so it's out there uh, when you do run into a roadblock and your customer service has been terrific. There's been a few times where I've had issues and I've emailed and gotten an immediate response. Okay. I can see an immediate impact from, from your background, Paul, that where there's no file cabinets that liquid text <laughs> has added to the fact that you've gone digital, but what else has liquid text helped with the practice? Does it save you time, preparation for court? I mean, what else does it apply well, directly to your practice? To my practice, it probably saved my firm hundreds of thousands of dollars in just terms of physical labor and costs connected to documents themselves. So, right, the fact that you your paperless is means nothing. It just means that you need to get access to the materials that you're working on. So because Li liquid text has a search feature, I can have 10,000 documents in liquid text, but find those documents when I need them by using the search tool to actually find what it is I, I have here, right? Because it's great to be paperless, but then you have to have access to the materials you're working on. And liquid text has a built-in search engine that lets you find what you're looking for, which is as, as important as anything else. That's been very effective for me in the practice. Yeah, me, me as well. I just used that exact feature when I was in Tennessee preparing for my hearing on Monday. I had those eight or 10 documents open up. A question came to mind. I put in the search. You can either search the current document that you're in or all the documents that you have uh, in that grouping. And it, it's just a, another fantastic uh, feature. And so that's another aha moment for me, just in terms of another way of using it. How do you collaborate within the office with Liquid Text? Uh, well, honestly, it's the first thing I tell young associates who join the firm that they really have to get on board and have an understanding of how it works, because what I like to do is be able to share my work, especially to help the younger lawyers understand how to prepare for a hearing, how to become a good litigator, and the thoroughness that's required. Uh, I just sent my notes to an attorney about my uh, process for showing up for that hearing on Monday, and I'm going to sit down and talk with him about all the documents I looked at and, and what I did to prepare for that hearing and the ability to share uh, what you've marked up and what you've done, not just as a flattened PDF, but as so the person can actually see it uh, is important. And that's another way that we use it here. Very good. Paul, can you add to that? What do you, how do you collaborate with that? What I do, the reason why I make sure that every lawyer has liquid text on their iPad is I want to be able to go through the annotations for me and then upload potentially using um, AirDrop, but another feature, just download to them what I've read and what my annotations are. But it goes the other way. 
let them do the work, let them annotate the document, then send back to me their work product. So it, it becomes a very seamless exchange of information and I can have other people do the reviews and then I have it on my iPad uh, going forward. Oh, very good. So Jeffrey recommended to you to use liquid text. Have you recommended liquid text to any of your colleagues uh, outside of the office in, in the profession to use liquid text? Yeah, I, I think, well, I've done a series of, so by way of background, I think in 2015, the ABA did the 12 highest tech lawyers in America and put me on that list of the 12 highest tech lawyers in the United States. And it's, it's only because I'm an early adopter. I, I like trying out new technologies and seeing how they fit into my practice. So liquid text, Jeff brought that to my attention. It was a perfect use case for me to see how it was going to work. I've done a series of programs around the country on, I try cases, Jason, I try cases only with my iPad. So I do a paperless trial. I've had trials with a million documents, not pages, a million documents, and everything is paperless. Everything is using my iPad. So I've done a lot of programs for lawyers, how to try cases using your iPad in the courtroom. And I always identify liquid text as one of my go-to products. In, in, uh, in Apple, you have the bottom screen, which is your locked um, applications. And on the bottom of my screen, my locked applications are settings, music, notability, which is the note-taking program, notability, and liquid text and, and email. But liquid text is a part of my go-to, never lose applications that's on my iPad. So I always tell lawyers when we're talking, talking about paperless, and I do this through Apple, this is what you want to use. Do you ever tell them what they can expect when they pick up liquid text? I don't think so. I think ultimately everyone's got to have their own unique experience with it. I highly recommend that lawyers who have documents, whether they're paperless or not, if you have documents, you need to use liquid text as a way to annotate, review, analyze, and argue. That's the only thing I tell people. Um, but everyone's got their own use abilities and capabilities that I don't try to get into. Okay. And you were going into describing a project that you use liquid text to. Can you get into some of the details of using liquid text in a specific litigation or case? I'll just kind of walk us through it. So typically what I do is when I have a new case, I set up a folder for that case title. And then I then create subfolders for that particular case. So Jewel e-cigarette litigation. I set up the Jewel folder and then I create subfolders. And the subfolders for me here, I'm looking at my screen is articles because there's a lot of articles, both scientific and otherwise. So I put all my articles in one folder. I have discovery in another folder. I have experts in another folder. I have science documents in another folder. I have pleadings in a folder. And I have ultimately the settlement folder that has all the settlement documentation. When I annotate a document, I need to know if I've reviewed it because I've got hundreds of documents. I don't know whether I actually reviewed it. So I, I put a check mark. If I put a, an asterisk, it means I'm a work in progress. I, I let, let myself know where am I in this review process. And if it's got a check mark, it's been annotated by me and is ready to go. So I download every day, probably a dozen documents to liquid text. And I don't take them out of my main folder until I reviewed it, and then I drop it into the appropriate folder in the case it belongs to. That's my use. Cases, and then subfolders within those cases, and then annotating those documents with some way to know whether or not I've reviewed it or not. Okay. So you can easily pick up where you left off, no matter how complex you... Correct. Right. Exactly. And sometimes I'll like little, put a little mark where I am in a document, or I'll put one final annotation and know where to go back to to finish the review of the document, but it's very scalable. So it can be a one-page document or it could be a 5,000-page document. Once it's here, I can I can use it. This is the Jewel folder. And these are the different documents that have come in on the Jewel litigation. And I have the check mark showing whether I've reviewed it or not. 
And as you can see, the National Settlement Agreement and the, both of the National Settlement Agreements apparently have not reviewed, though they have a one next to them, which means I might have imported them twice and I've already reviewed them and I need to delete that. By the way, I love the delete feature where you can find deleted documents in the old days. When you delete the document, it was gone forever. And today you can re re retrieve. If I pull this one up, you can see how I'm using it. So this is mm -hmm. back, the date of this one was 2020. So you, you've got all my, my notes here. This was maybe even before you could block copy text out. So I had to use it with actually handwriting all my notes. So that's what you see here, all my handwritten notes. And then of course, all of the the tethers are here that just bring you to, and you can, it's like a spaghetti <laughs> mash of all the stuff. But this is a perfect example of my use. And then these are my notes to give you an idea of what it was I needed to focus on with regard to the hearing before the judge. Do, do you have anything else you might want to add to lawyers actually reviewing this video later as to using liquid text? No, I would say this. This is a must have product for my practice. I have to imagine it would be a must have product for your practice. I would encourage you to try it out. There's no risk in trying it out, seeing how it works. And it's been a remarkable journey for me. I've been using it since, since beta one. I mean, I have no doubt it's going to continue to get better with time. I would urge lawyers who are watching this video to give this a try. You got nothing to lose. Very good. And uh, I'm following in your footsteps, but I, I remember it coming out, but I'm a Windows guy. So I never picked it up until this this year when it came out with the Surface uh, compatibility. Yeah. And Jeff Concius from 2015, when he got Craig's name, was like a drumbeat trying to get him to, to get the Microsoft pieces. But I finally converted him over to the, to, the, to the iPad. I'm curious as to whether you think that Liquid Text actually helps you become a better lawyer and maybe even more likely to win in court. I think it makes you a better lawyer because, you know, what it used to be when I started my practice in, in 85, it was the big firm that dominated. Bigger was better. It was awesome. Today, the small fish eats the big fish. So we have the capability as a smaller law firm to get this technology and manage the technology in such a way that we can run circles around the other side. So I think that really, Jason, makes us a very efficient group of lawyers. So we become a strike force. And that's what Liquid Text lets you be, a strike force and not a monolithic enterprise.